we want to make clear, though, we aren't here to speculate about what happened with the Haney family. But this tragedy has gotten a lot of people thinking about domestic violence in Utah and the fact that it doesn't always show up in ways we expect. So here with us today is Jen Oxborough Bar uh, of the uh, Utah D uh, D Domestic Violence Coalition. And I think that one of the things when you think about when you hear domestic violence is that it's just, you know, spouse, spouse, maybe spouse and children. Um, but clearly that's, that's not always the case. Right. Domestic violence is a term that is used very broadly. It can mean a lot of different things. It can be between siblings, between cohabitants, but most typically it's between family members or intimate partners, current yeah. or former intimate partners. So why does Utah have such a high domestic violence homicide rate? It's been high for over 20 years. Uh, domestic violence fatalities in Utah declined last year. Uh, and the year before for the first time in 20 plus years. Okay. And we think that that's related to a standardized lethality assessment protocol, which helps people recognize the most dangerous signs that are predictive of intimate partner homicide and family violence. Yeah. So the uh, 2020 legislative session, of course, now in session just uh, earlier this week. And uh, what uh, are there are there certain measures that the coalition is looking at that uh, maybe could help in these areas? We are. We're trying to make sure that the limited funding that we have to provide life-saving services on the ground, that that funding is fine-tuned and we're using it as efficiently and effectively as possible. So there's a bill being run by Representative King to help us make sure that victim advocacy programs are accessible and have the funding that they need to do the work on the ground to help families in need. Yeah, so, and can you talk a little bit about, uh, maybe we should have started off with this, but just what the coalition does. Sure, sure. We've been around since the late 70s. Uh, there's a coalition like us in every single state and territory, especially since the Violence Against Women Act went into effect federally. And um, our role is to help all of the community-based programs who provide shelter, help people get protective orders, take crisis calls. We, we act as an umbrella organization for them. We train the people that work in their programs, we advocate for safe laws and policy and for funding for our programs. And then we also coordinate that lethality assessment protocol and answer crisis calls. Uh, collectively in Utah, we answer over 40,000 crisis calls per year at our link line, which is 1-800-897-LINK. If anybody ever needs help, we hope that you'll reach out to us. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. And that was my, my next question. Anything else that uh, people who, who are victims of domestic violence um, um, or maybe even the, the people who are the, the abuser, Absolutely. Um, uh, what, what message would you, would you have them hear? We work on the whole issue. So we also work with a highly trained, uh, skilled group of therapists and mental health professionals, the courts, law enforcement, um, lots of people who understand how complex this is and can help anyone, whether you're being victimized, um, abused, or whether you're using violence to control and manage things in your home and you want to find a different way to live your life. We hope that people will reach out to us. We also hear a lot from people who are concerned about people that they love or people that they yeah. know when they're seeing risk and, and warning factors. So if you want to figure out how to start a conversation or if you want to talk through some things that might be worrisome to you, call one of our professionally trained advocates. We'd love to hear. Okay, and that, and they can go through maybe specific signs to look for yes. and, and things like that? Okay. Yes, there are 11 predictive factors of intimate partner homicide risk in particular. So things like access to a firearm, someone feeling suicidal, a previous history of strangulation, violence or abuse in front of children, uh, stalking, obsessive behavior. These are things that we need to take very seriously, and that's what our professional advocates who are highly trained understand how to screen for that. Yeah. Okay. Well, thank you very much, uh, Jen. We appreciate your time coming out here and talking to us about it. an important issue, obviously, and, uh, and in Utah, it sounds like especially.